Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I am doing Comic Uno's Top 10 Comic Books of the Year. One of my favorite videos to do, and let's jump into this one. So we're going to go 10 to 1. So number 10 for this year is Firepower by Image Comics. This is a book I absolutely adored last year, and it continues to run on its stride. And with this one, we get to see a family narrative, and I feel like that's what's makes firepower at its best. Yes, of course, you have the martial arts and the mystery intrigue about this uh, this dragon that, that may or may not destroy everything uh, and be teaming up with the villain, but it's really the root of this ordinary family uh, being mixed into this uh, martial arts storyline. And, and there's just so, so many wonderful characters uh, throughout this narrative. And the artwork is just drop dead gorgeous when it comes to these big action sequences and martial arts um, moments, but also the smaller moments between the family members. So that is number 10. Moving on to number nine, which is Second Coming, Only Begotten Son. The first volume blew my mind uh, with how satirical it is when it comes to how do you put a modern lens on, you know, a, a, a telltale story like the Bible. And uh, we get to see a more modern Jesus, a more modern God, uh, all in the mix of uh, a superhero, which is kind of our, our, our American mythology. And, and that has been so interesting to see the dichotomy between these three characters and just how hysterical this, this book is, where it really just paints exactly, you know, how would uh, modern society take uh, the reappearance of Jesus. And uh, it's definitely one of Mark Russell's uh, best books, in my opinion. And I'm so glad to see a volume two be just as strong as that first volume. And I'm very excited to see if 2022 will bring even more exciting second coming stories. Moving on to number eight, which was a mini series by Marvel Comics, and that is Power Pack. Now, I am just such a big Power Pack fan, and I'm so glad to see the heroes get a, a little bit of spotlight for this mini. And I, and I felt like this book just kept their voices so well done. And something that I thought this book did expertly is every issue focused on a different character and really put family at the forefront and showing that, you know, even though they're young kids and, you know, growing up uh, even further, we, we get to see that. Uh, they are very smart heroes and that's something I've enjoyed about the power pack just because they've been at it for so long they've really learned how to work as a team and and we really get to see that teamwork uh, full throttle with this with this mini series Moving on to number seven, which is The Fantastic Four. Uh, you know, I, I love The Fantastic Four, but I think it's been a while since we've had such an exciting volume like this, especially because they were on hiatus for such a long time. And Dan, Dan Slott just knows The Fantastic Four. You know, we, we've seen him write characters like The Human Torch way before he even wrote The Fantastic Four. And those were always some of my favorite Amazing Spider-Man issues when Spidey and The Human Torch teamed up with each other uh, in Dan Slott's run. And we, and we get to see the team interact just so well and, and something I like like about this volume is that, yes, it's a superhero book. It's, it's also a soap opera all at once. We get to see a lot of family drama and a lot of character growth and, and a lot of character arcs for individual characters, uh, you know, Sue and Reed's children. We get to see uh, Alicia and, and the thing be, become parents and, and Johnny have his own uh, soap opera line with all, all the girls that he uh, might end up with uh, and, and who he's destined to be with. And, you know, you throw in Doctor Doom and and, and, and kind of a bigger story arcs that are building for 2022 which Dan Slott also does so well, weaving storylines, uh, you know, that that we won't get to see paid off in, into a couple of years from now and, and really building those moments. And, uh, you know, this has just been such a fun book. And, and that's what I love about it. It's just fun. And it's just such a reliable read every, every month it comes out. So that is my number seven pick. Moving on to number six, I, I never knew I would say this, but Superman, Son of Kal-El. I've never really been a John Ken fan. I, you know, they, he's had a weird journey aging him up and then I wasn't a huge fan of Super Sons. I didn't really feel like he had an identity of his own and, and Son of, of Kal-El really changes that. It, it had every, um, you know, critique I ever had about John and, and really, uh, 
changed it and and was able to work on it and 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 that's exactly what this book's about it's john kent finding his own voice outside of superman and i i personally love the the bisexual storyline that is uh at least approached this year i i'm really excited to see where it goes uh in in the upcoming months as as we gear into more of that storyline because we've only really gotten to see one or two issues in 2021 uh but the artwork is so good for this book i just love john's supporting cast and him as a character and him as the superhero of tomorrow and and tom taylor just writes this character so well and i'm i'm very excited to see where this is gonna go so moving on to number five a book that actually hasn't had too many issues but has blown me away just that much and and that is dark knights of steel I never knew I would like a medieval book. I'm not a medieval fan. I tend not to read medieval storylines. It's just usually not something I enjoy. But then, you know, I saw Tom Taylor and I was like, okay, I gotta at least give this a try. And man, oh man, the way this world is built in one issue, you're like, okay, I'm sucked in. I want to know everything about this world. And then issue two comes and and you you gear up and, and move the pawns a little further on the chessboard and be like, oh, this is even more interesting. We're building a war. We're, we're not just building a world, but we're building relationships and, um, you know, either positive or negative relationships, enemies and heroes, uh, that, that's what's so fascinating about these two issues. And putting, uh, you know, characters that you know and love on, on their head and, and just seeing a very different story from them, uh, ranging from Wonder Woman to Batman. Artwork is also drop dead gorgeous for this book as well. And, you know, even if you do not like medieval storylines, I promise you, you're going to like this. Uh, I am so excited to see where this one's gonna go. Moving on to number four, a book that's just been so consistent, and that is Robin, uh, Damian Wayne, uh, Joshua Williamson, really, really hit it out of the ballpark with this series, where we get to see Damian Wayne, again, kind of step out of the shadow of Batman. I guess that's the theme of DC Comics this year. And and we get to see him be a kid. You know, we get to see these little moments where he's reading his manga, or he's trying to make friends. And, and that's always been what I feel like is so special about Damien and when Damien's written the best is when he's all a grumpy old man and then there's those little moments to remind us, oh, he's still really young and, and there's still this like light to him. There's, you know, you have the darkness and brooding of Batman, but then you're like, oh no, he, he doesn't have to follow that path. And then you bring in, you know, uh, a tournament of assassins and meet all these new characters and and fan favorite characters like Rose Wilson and and Connor Hawk. You bring an awesome ensemble cast here and the artwork it has kind of a manga feel with Gleb's feel uh, Gleb's artwork here and art style and it just works and I you know I feel like it's been a long time since I've read a superhero book that feels like. Um, a TV show in a way, you know, it really feels like it has its own identity and it doesn't really remind me of any other Damian Wayne story I've read. And I, and that's something I really, really adore about this book that just feels like a instant classic already. Uh, so very excited to see where that one goes. So moving on to number three, a book that blew my mind this year, and that's Radiant Black. Uh, as a Power Rangers fan, as a superhero fan, I was already sold. You know, I like Kyle Higgins as a writer, and I was like, cool, let's see a, a new super, a superhero book. We haven't seen that in a while with indie comics. Will this be anything like Invincible? And uh, we, we get to really see this this new world form, and, and the thing that really put this to my number one list was how many twists and turns this book has in just the first few issues. The, the premise is this guy, Nathan, he's a writer, which already is a, a different angle you would take from a, with a superhero, but very relatable. So I was like, oh, cool. I, I already like this character a lot. And they were like, eh, well, let's kill him off or at least put him in a coma. And let's make this other guy who was his best friend and was the supporting character, the actual main character. Uh, so we get, you know, these Power Ranger vibes. You're like, okay, so what's going to happen to Nathan, who was our original main character? Is he going to be like a, a green ranger of some sort? So you already have like what you know about the Power Rangers mythos. It's like, oh, is it going to be instilled at all with Radiant Black? But it just keeps putting what we love about the superhero side of Power Rangers with its own superhero spin. And uh, the artwork is just so good. There's mo there's a whole issue where they use negative space to to talk about this existential crisis of Radiant Black. And and that's just one of the many moments that is so striking about the visuals of Radiant Black and, and this, this creative team in general. Uh, so, and, and they're expanding the world even further in 2022. And I can't wait to see what happens there and uh, exactly what heroes we're going to see and, and what spinoffs we're going to see. 
So moving on to number two, a book that did end this year, you know, but it did last a, a couple of years, which I was very happy to see, and that's Runaways. I am a huge Runaways fan. I love this team, and Rainbow, with every issue, from issue one to this final issue, has just hit it out of the ballpark, made her own voice, but also stayed so true to what Runaways is, and it, it was such a character-driven story, and... You know, there a lot of comics, a lot of superhero comics has to balance action and here's this villain and here's this this bigger scheming world ending thing. And the Runaways never had to do that. There was obviously enemies because you have to have an antagonist, but always focused on the characters, it focused on their drama. And you know, the, honestly, their biggest enemy is yourself. It's their identity, and and that's something I've always enjoyed about the Runaways. And and Rainbow still put them in such interesting situations. We had Krakoa tied into there. We had a whole nother team of uh, heroes that, you know, didn't turn out to be so great. The J team. So there's just so many interesting arcs that didn't necessarily feel like, okay, here's five issues of this. It just felt like uh, it was just so seamless to story arcs. It really just felt like it all weaved in so well. And character always came first in that regard. And and then uh, the artwork was so similar to Chris Anka's style, but still gave its own vibe to it. And it, again, always focused on character, always focused on those uh, reactions and facial expressions, which is just what made Runaways so great. Uh, and I will miss Runaways, but very excited to, to see Rainbow's take on She-Hulk, because I know that she's a big fan of that character. And I'm a big fan of that character so if it's anything like Runaways I'm sure it's going to be um, a slam dunk. Now moving on to number one and that is Nightwing. This is night and day pun intended where Tom Taylor jumped onto, to, onto this book and it became not just a Nightwing book it became a love letter to the Bat family and we get to see Nightwing uh Nightwing's relationship with Alfred and how that affects his hero journey here but it's not really about Batman at all it really is Nightwing's relationship with Barbara and Tim uh those are the main characters we get to see here and the artwork is so stunning it's just it's so great to see you know the same creative team as Injustice Gods Among Us uh jump into a a pretty pretty much a Bat family book with with Nightwing at the center uh and and, and just bring what fans always wanted. Something different to the table. It does not feel recycled in any way. But it also feels so true to these characters. And you're like, okay, yes, this is the next steps I wanted to see these characters do. And every issue either has a surprise or, again, some moment you're like, oh, that was meant to be for that character. Uh, so I absolutely adore this book. And I think Tom Taylor has just done such a great job, as you can see with this list. He has three titles on, on my top 10 list. And, and he's now exclusive to DC Comics. So I'm curious to see what other stuff that he's going to bring to the company. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. That is my top 10 list. Let me know in the comments below what were your favorite comic books of the year. And then next week I'll be doing a most anticipated list for 2022. So what books I'm, I'm excited to read for next year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.